Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Lewis and Clark, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous game all about the Lewis and Clark expedition as America traveled west and tried to start working on its manifest destiny and all that stuff. Now, I'm not going to spend much time talking about the art, but I just do have to mention up front, this game is so lovely. I would not be surprised if it makes it on to several people's most pretty game of the year awards. It's just absolutely gorgeous. But this is not an art critique. This is a gameplay run through. So let's start running. Now in this game, history has been slightly reimagined. There wasn't just the Lewis and Clark expedition sponsored by the US government. There are actually several expeditions all competing to be the first to make it all the way to the West Coast, traveling down river, through the mountains, through some more river, through some more mountains, and then finally to the West Coast. Whoever makes it out there first wins. At the beginning of the game, everybody starts in the exact same situation. We've got our player board, which is basically all our rafts that we're going to use to travel. We start with a pelt, some wood, and some buffalo meat, and one Indian guide, Native American helper, whatever you want to call him. Also, we start with six cards, and these cards are exactly the same. They have the exact same abilities. Let's see. Let's look at them here. I've got the ability to make equipment for myself out in the wild if I need it, just by you know doing whatever needs to be done. Could go hunting for buffalo, could go trapping for pelts, could go harvesting lumber, can travel. This is my commander card, which means I can use different resources to travel different distances. And finally, I can recruit. This is my translator who would let me recruit more Native American helpers. I start with one, but there are more to be had at the local villages. So I start with these six cards. Jen starts with the exact same six cards, although I'll well, actually, you'll notice Jen's hunter, this uh, fat guy with the coonskin cap, is very, very different than my, my, this is mine, this is Jen's. They're the exact same thing, but these are all historical personages, including this dog who was the uh, dog of, I think it was it Lewis or Clark, I forget. You can see there, there's the pup, uh, the first dog to make it, or you know. The, you know, the dog actually made it all the way to the West Coast. There's actually tons of neat little historical tidbits about all the characters in this game. They're all based on real people. It's actually very, very cool. I mean, you could almost use this game as a history lesson if you wanted. But it's a game, so let's start playing. Okay, now, every turn, like I said, what we're trying to do is we're trying to use our cards as best we can, as smart as we can, to race to the West Coast. Every turn, you have to do one action. And that action could either be play one of your cards to use its ability, or it could be use one of your Native Americans and send them to the local village to do one of these worker placement style to do one of these many, many different actions. You gather resources, you know, reactivate actions, you know, uh, clear the card queue, get horses, canoes, upgrade your expedition. There's a bunch of stuff you can do at the Native American villages with your helper. So you have to do either he's got to go to a village, and I lose him, by the way. This is a worker placement where you lose your workers. Once I place him onto the board, he's gone, but I can recruit more, or I can use one of my guys. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm the start player, what I'm going to do is based on the random cards that came up. There are a bunch of, these are all the characters we could meet along the way. And again, these are all real people with abilities, you know, game abilities that are tied to who they were and what they did in the real world. So, and at the beginning of the game, the cheaper ones are here, the more expensive ones are over there. So I probably want to recruit a cheap one. And you know what? I know I already used him before. I love John Robertson. He's great. He, his ability is that I can use equipment to move, I mean, he can basically take equipment and find a way to move us further up the river. Normally to move up river, we can either use buffalo or canoes. Buffalo to move two spaces, canoes to move three. This guy gives you another option using two equipment to move. Um, so three spaces as opposed to two or four. I want to recruit that guy. I love him and very much enjoy him. He gives me more flexibility. And the cost for him is going to be one pelt and one equipment. He costs one equipment and one pelt. Now, I've got the pelt. Remember, we started with some stuff. I have no equipment. So I think to begin, I'm going to get myself some equipment, which means I've got to have William Bratton here make some equipment for us. So I have to play him. That'll be my one core action is I will play him. Now, you don't just play a card by himself. He needs help. Whenever you are, whenever you try to play one of your cards to give their effect, he needs somebody else to help him work. And there's two ways I could do that. I could take any of these other cards, flip them over, and you can see this means, you know, and actually the number here indicates how much help they'll give. This guy will give one help, one help, one help, one help, or the interpreter, he's a tough guy, he will give two help. So say if I wanted to use the interpreter, I could flip him, put him under here like this, 
And this indicates that I am actually helping, giving two help to William Bratton, which means he will activate his special ability twice. Now, alternatively, instead of, but that means I can't use my interpreter because he's going to spend this round helping out my engineer. And so I won't be able to recruit more Native Americans. I have to, you know, I have to give up this ability to power this ability. Now, alternatively, if I didn't want to do that, you know, I could give up any of these other cards, but I want to give up him because I'll get more equipment. I'll get two. But in, in, in addition to or instead of using cards, I can use my Native American helper. Instead of him going up to the village, he can come over here and help. And this means I have activated William Burton 1, which means I'll get one uh, one uh, equipment. Now I'm gonna actually do a little bit of both. I'm gonna take my most my strongest guy, my interpreter. That means I won't be able to recruit any helpers, any Native Americans. He's gonna help, and I'm gonna include my Native American as well. So that means I am activating William Bratton one, two, three times. I get three equipment. One, two, three. So there you go. That was my first turn. So I've now got a lot of equipment. I've got my base stuff. And now remember. That was my core action, my compulsory action. I used one of my cards, but I can also recruit and set up camp. I'm not gonna set up camp for a while. You don't wanna do that until you have to. Um, but I am gonna recruit now. Because I've got a bunch of equipment, I've got the pelt, I can afford John Robertson, who is who I wanted. When I recruit him, let's see, remember? He costs one pelt, one equipment, so bye-bye equipment, bye-bye pelt. And he goes directly into my hand. I'll be able to use him next turn if I want. Okay, and that was my turn. I activated the guy, powered him up with uh, my only, and now I have no Native American guides. I cannot do any of the actions on the board because I've used him here. Alrighty, so that was my turn. Now, Jen's turn. Let's take a look at what she is going to do. Now, first of all, because I hired that guy, everybody gets cheaper. A new one comes out. Yes, it's three eagles. Oh, this is interesting. This is a guy who you can use equipment to buy horses. Normally, horses cost three non-matching goods, and you know, it's kind of expensive to try and get these horses. This guy makes horses a little bit easier to get, and horses are important because they're the primary way we can get through the mountain passes. There's other ways, but you know, so that's actually interesting. This would be a really good guy for me because you know, I've got a guy who gets me through the rivers by using equipment. If I get this, then I have a guy who can get me through the mountains using equipment as well. And then if I can just find a way to get more equipment, I'll be totally set. But anyway, so my strategy for the whole game is kind of starting to come into focus. I'm probably going to focus, particularly if I can get this guy, heavily on equipment. But anyway, now let's see what Jen's going to do. She's got the same six options. And now everything just got cheaper. This guy's very cool because this is a permanent effect. Once you've got him, um, whenever you move up the river, it you can get to move two extra spaces. So he really helps out. Who is he? He's Nicholas Gerald. He's number 36. Let's, let's say a, get a little bit of Nicholas's history. Number 36. Uh, let me see. He is a French citizen, serves as an interpreter for Louis when he meets the Spanish governor, offers his land to build Camp Dubois, and sells gear and supplies for the journey. Just a little bit of history. Now, he has no effect when you activate him, but if he's face up in your playing area when you move your scout, add two spaces. Um, so, that's pretty cool. That means Jen, I mean, and you know, there's a lot of river. We have to move up a lot of river before we get to the mountains, and there's more river. So if Jen gets this guy, that could be pretty cool. Plus, you notice this guy is a two. He is more powerful. So he, even when I'm not, even when Jen's not using him to move faster up the river, he's useful anyway because he can power other people at a level two instead of level one. So I think Jen wants to recruit, plus he's the cheapest guy out here. So I think Jen wants to recruit him. Now, she's got the pelt. She doesn't have equipment. So, now there's, she could do the exact same thing I did. She could get some equipment. She could also send her one Native American helper up here and get some equipment in the, but she needs two equipment. So, I think she's gonna basically do the same thing I did. She is going to use her engineer, Alexander Willard here, to generate some equipment. And now she's gotta power him up. Let's see here. And now she wanna use her level two so that he, you know, he'd get a lot more equipment. Well. Does she want to recruit more guys? Maybe this is the only guy she's going to recruit. I think she's going to take it easy. She's just now, because she's going to use him, she could either give up her guide or she could give up. Now, does she not want to hunt this turn? Does she not want to get pelts to do more recruiting? Does she not want to get wood? Wood can be used to build upgrades, additional rafts or canoes. Well, let's see. Wood, 
is like I said, really useful for canoes. I think if she gets this guy, she doesn't need as she doesn't need canoes because she'll be able to move faster. She's gonna use her logger. Okay. And so that means she has activated him. He gets to do his power once. And now you think that means, like me, when I did it, uh, I would get to activate this once. I would get one equipment. However, here's another interesting twist. It didn't affect me on my turn because I was the first player, but it, aff it affects me now. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you'll notice, now, um, since Jan just put these up, there are these symbols up here. And they are the gray equipment symbol, the brown wood symbol, another gray, and another wood. What we do is whenever you do an action, you know, one of these resource gathering actions, you look at all the symbols that are up there, and that determines how much you can do it. You were only going to activate Alexander once, but because there is now one, two gray actions, activating William once generates two equipment. If we put it in you know, a Native American here, so we're activating William twice, you would generate four equipment because it'd be one, two to, for the first activation, and then three, four for the second activation. So it's a really core element of the game. You really have to pay attention to what your opponent's doing. If you think your opponent is about to play a card that would pump up your action, don't do your action until they've played their card because then it can be better. So in this case, because I did equipment first and I had to pay a lot to get three equipment, Jen, she's only paying one worker and she gets two equipment. Let me come over here. Because uh, she followed on for me. And there you go. So, Jen got two equipment. That's what she needed. She's going to recruit. She is going to hire Nicholas here, who, who needed two equipment. So, the two equipment is paid and one pelt. But now, Jen's got um, a nice level two guy who can help out with stuff and can also help her move up the river quicker. Okay, so that was Jen's first turn. Now, back to me, back to my second turn. This is already used up. I've still got four more or five more cards. And what am I going to do next? Let's see here. Now, you know what? I think I'm a, the guy I just hired, I'm going to use him. Oh, although, interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. That's the guy I'm going to do. I'm going to use him. And you remember, I, I, I spent a lot to get a lot of equipment. Now I'll be able to use my excess equipment to activate his power and move up the river. So I'm going to use him. And I have to, I, he needs some help. He can't do it by himself. So I could use the logger, the pelter, the, you know, the trapper, my guy who lets me move or the hunter. Those are all good things. That's actually kind of a tough choice. And here's the thing, I don't want to use the logger. I want to save him. I want to activate him this turn because you'll notice now there is one, two, three, three wooden tokens up. So when I activate the logger, I can get a lot of wood out of him. So I'm definitely not going to use him because I'm going to get a lot of wood on my next turn. And that's why I'm doing this. It puts another wood symbol out and so I'll be able to get a lot of, so I'm not going to use him. It'd be nice to move again, and remember, I can use food, and I have some food to move, so I don't think I want to use him. So, do I use the pelter or the hunter? I think I'll use the pelter. I'm not going to recruit anymore for a while, so I don't need pelts, because they're primarily used to recruit more people. Oh, whoops, by the way, I forgot. Since Jen recruited somebody, everybody got cheaper again. Forgot about that. Okay, and oh, Sacagawea came out. Sacagawea, who lets you do um, village actions without having to use your Indian guides. That's pretty cool. All right. Anyway, though, so uh, since I've already got this guy, I'm really happy with him. I don't think I'm going to recruit anybody for a while. I'm going to have my pelter help out or my, my trapper. And so that means I'm putting one power towards John's ability. So I get to activate him once. And his activation is I take my other two equipment and that lets me move three up the river. So my scout goes one, two, three, and the expedition has begun, but we got a long way to go. Okay, that was my second action. Now remember, I can also camp. I'm not going to do that because I still got some more work to do. Or I could recruit, but I can't do that because I don't. I'm, I'm almost out of resources. So my turn is over. Jen's turn. All right, now let's see. So Jen got this guy. If she wants to be able to benefit from him, she needs to put him into play, and then when she moves, she would get to move a lot further. However, on the other hand, if she uses him to power somebody else, he will put two action. I wonder, maybe, Jen was originally thinking she'd move this turn, but maybe she wants to spend more time in St. Louis to start building up for a better turn next time. That could be actually pretty cool. Let's see. So, now she could move. You know, um, playing this and, and, and powering him with somebody 
And then on the subsequent turn, say playing this guy and powering with somebody means she would be able to move four spaces total. Normally two by using her food, but four, and then she'd have one action left over. So that's interesting. That's one strategy she could do with all these things. Now remember, she's got this Native American. She could send the Native American up here and maybe say get some more food. Um, which she could then use. If she has more food, she could activate Meriwether Lewis twice and travel farther that way. That's something she could do. Or she could have Seaman hunt for more food. Oh, that's not a good name for a dog. I'm, don't, I'm just going to say the pooch. I'm not going to say uh, Seaman. He could have Seaman um, go hunting, or she could have Seaman go hunting and get some more food to, to power her forward movement. But, you know, I think this turn, she's going to let me go off in the lead and she'll travel next turn. She wants to prepare herself more. She's going to do more preparation in town. I think that means she wants to do some more recruiting before she leaves. Now, that means she's going to need more equipment um, and more pelts. Now, she's already gotten all the equipment she can from her guy. This guy could come up and do some more equipment. Let's see here. What else could she do? Now, interestingly, yeah. Yeah, I think so. She's going to send her, her Native American helper up to town to get something. I think she'll have him come here. And that means she gets another equipment and another wood. So now she's got two wood and one equipment, which uh, means you know she's starting to save up to be able to recruit somebody else. Okay, so that was her second action. Now, she can't recruit anybody because she doesn't have the, what's needed, so uh, the rest of her hand. So her turn is very simple. She just used Native American. All right, now my turn again. I've got three more cards in my hand and no Native American helpers. I'm running out of time before I'm gonna have to camp. Let's see, so I've already moved. What do I wanna do now? Okay, now I'm gonna gather that lumber I was talking about. Oh. That's interesting. So if I, so this will mean because if I use him now, I will get one, two, three, four, four lumber for a single activation of him. That is very cool. But I'll have a lot of lumber then, but it'll weigh me down. Actually, I didn't think about this. That's kind of a problem. Because here's the thing: you want to have a lot of resources, but the more resources you have, the more it slows your progress down. This boat being full doesn't slow you down at all. This boat having anything in it slows you down by one day. This boat slows you down by the number of days equal to how much stuff is in it. So I could get a whole bunch of wood now, but I'd end up filling up almost all, and I'd really it'd slow me down. But all that wood I could use later to upgrade. Oh, that's cool too. But I don't have any Native Americans to do these actions. I need Native Americans, but I've already used my Native American to power that. So here's the thing: I want to get to where I can camp pretty quick, so I can get my Native American helper back. So that's it. I am going to do that. I'm going to go on ahead. I'm going to have the big, big lumber day, huge lumber day. Oh, on the other hand though, I could wait on this. I could wait on this a little bit. I could just go on ahead and move. I've got one food left over. I could use that to move two steps further along the river. <sighs> oh, and I could wait on the lumber. Because if I get all that lumber, it'll help me later, but it'll slow me down now. I'll lose some of my progress. So do I want to make more progress or do I want to get a lot of lumber? Hmm. Yeah, with that, I'm just going to get the lumber. It's going to be crazy. And I will trade in my, my hunter. All right. And now you can only apply one. So it's not like I could trade in both of these guys. You can't do this. You can't say, oh, I'm, I'm activating him twice. You can only put one guy. Now, if I had any Native American helpers, if I had any Indian helpers, I could put them on here as well. But as it is, this is my move. And this means I'm going to activate him once. And there's one, two, three, four. That means I get four wood. One, two, three, four. So that's a lot of resources. One, two, three. And I have filled myself up. And now, that was my core action. And remember, I can recruit, I can set up camp. Now, I still can't recruit because I don't have anything to recruit people. And I think I'm actually going to set up camp now. Because you set up camp, basically. Setting up camp is like the end of a round. But in this game, you can cause the end of the round whenever you want. I'm going to set up camp. And because on my next turn, all I've got is this one last card by himself. I can't play him because there's no help. So there's no reason for me to keep going. I can't push any farther forward. I'm going to set up camp now. So what happens is when you set up camp, I think it's on the other side here, right? Yes, yeah, set up camp. First of all, place all your Indians back on your boats. So my Indian comes back. So he'll be available for me next week after I've, you know, after I've camped for the night. I put him back over here. 
Calculate the time spent in camp. It's equal to the sum of time icons on the cards still in your hand and on your boat. So, because I did not play Nathaniel, he did not do anything, this means I have to spend more time in camp. Because I've got him, I have to move back once I've lost. I moved forward three, but I've lost one because I had this card left over. And also, I've lost another one back one more, because I had stuff in this boat. If I had even more stuff, I'd have to move back even farther. If I had even more Native American helpers in this boat, I'd have to move back farther. So you can see, the bigger your expedition is, the harder it is to make forward progress, because you get more big and clumsy. So I moved forward three, but I lost two of that progress because I didn't use a card, and because I had excess stuff. So after all that, my first, you know, I've camped, I have now, only move forward one space for my first week or month or whatever you want to call it. And the last thing you do for camp is, um, let's see, you move camp backwards, bring your, okay, so now my camp originally was in St. Louis. It moves up here to indicate now I have permanently moved one space forward. This, this is your scout. You try to get him to move as far forward as you can, and then when you set up camp, if you don't fall back too terribly far, like say you fall back a little bit, you get to basically lock in your position. Now me, I've only moved forward one space this whole month, and so I've set up camp, and now the important thing is I get all my cards back. So now once again, I can use all those abilities and start moving forward again. So uh, basically at the end of my first month, I recruited one guy and I got a whole bunch of wood, which I'll be able to use to build stuff in next month, and I move forward one space. Jen, however, she's still going. She, how is that? Yeah, yeah. That was, what did she do? I've totally forgotten what she did. Oh, right, yeah. Her first turn, she hired somebody, and then her second turn, she went here. So she still got a long ways to go before she is going to set up camp, because she still got, wants to play a bunch more of these cards. So anyway, it's Jen's turn. What's she going to do now? Now, you'll notice, because I set up camp, all my cards are gone, so Jen can no longer get any kind of benefit or bonus based on the cards I played because they've all gone away. But anyway, Jen is now going to use her interpreter to recruit some more helpers. Now, so how, who does she want to recruit? I think she's going to use the guy she just, you know, this means she's going to power him up with this. Because she's not going to travel at all this turn. She's going to stay in St. Louis. She doesn't plan to travel. She does not plan to travel forward. So she's not going to use him for his ability to move further up the river. She's going to use him to power Pierre twice. So that means Jen gets to do two recruitment actions. And the way recruitment actions work, it's a three-step process. First of all, all the Indians who are on the board move to this central area, and then the person recruiting can take as many as they want. Normally, they'll take all of them. So Jen just got all these. Then a new Indian comes out. Then um, this guy, oh, and that's bad for Jen. This guy goes away. Remember, Jen wanted this guy because he was going to be a good hunter. So, uh, oh, she didn't recruit him. Should she have waited? Ah, what the hell? She'll with it. And everybody moves down. Now, remember, Jen activated her recruiting action twice. So now she gets to do the whole thing again. She gets to take all the Indians, put them in here, grab as many as she wants. So she's getting a big bunch of helpers here. Now another one comes out. This guy goes away. And everything is cheaper again. And now you'll notice what Jen has done is she's made this guy who was very expensive before. Now he's relatively cheap. Needs three equipment and a pelt. Jen's still got one equipment. She's hoping to recruit that guy um, if possible. All right, anyway, though. So that was Jen's action. She did recruiting twice, and now she's got a lot of Native American helpers who can pump up her remaining actions or who can go back onto the board and do more stuff. So while me, I had a fairly quick month and I set up camp, Jen is going for a long month. She's going to get a lot of stuff done before she sets up camp. All right, now it's my turn again. I've got a fresh hand of cards. I've got my helper back. I could start over, and I think I want to start moving up again. So probably what I want to do is I want to get some more equipment so that I can you know, power my forward motion. So I'm going to use my engineer again, and I will pump him up with my recruiter. So that means I get to activate this twice. And what the heck, I'll do... Right, so this... Yeah, no, I'm just going to activate twice. I could activate it a third time, but I'm going to save this guy for other stuff. So that means I get to activate him twice. And if you notice, I get to benefit because Jen's um, engineer is still out. So one, two, that means I get to activate him twice. That means I get a total of four equipment. 
So you can see I'm really starting to get loaded down now. There we go. So I got a lot of stuff. If I were to set up camp now, I would lose a lot of time because of all my, because I'm really overloaded here. Okay, that was my first action. Jen's action, she gets to go again. What's she gonna do now? Let's see. Now, she would like to get some more equipment because she'd like to recruit this guy, now that he's cheaper, but her only means of getting equipment is already tied up. If she, if she wants this guy back, she'd have to camp, but then she'd realize a big loss. However, she's got a bunch of Native American helpers. They can help her. And so what she's gonna do is, she's gonna take this guy and send him over here. This is, I forget what it's called, the shaman tent. Basically, she has to give up one buffalo to the shaman. And now this means she can activate any card that has previously been played. She can basically force this one, this one, or this one. She can activate anybody again. That's very cool. So she is going to activate, she could activate mine or hers, she's going to activate her own um, engineer guy. And so, now it's only a single activation. You know, if she chose him, just be, it doesn't matter. It would only be a single activation either way. But it's a single activation. There are two of the icons out, so that means Jen gets two. She gave up one food to get two more equipment. All right. Now she still needs the pelts to be able to hire, but she's pretty happy with that. That was her move. She has spent a Native American, so it's my turn again. So she has not set up camp yet. She's just getting bigger and bigger, trying to recruit more people. My turn again. Let's see here. Now, this is an interesting choice. What I want to do is, mm, I want to send this guy. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my, remember, I'm going to send my Native American here into camp, and I'm going to use him to upgrade. I have to spend three wood, so there goes three of my wood, and that means I'm lightened up. I'm not quite so weighed down by all that equipment. Although I just am still weighed down quite a bit. I give up three wood, and I could either upgrade to be able to carry more resources, or carry more Native Americans. I'm gonna upgrade and carry more Native Americans, and I have a choice. I can choose this side, which gives me one more space for a Native American. Or I can choose this side, which gives me up to three spaces, but it can slow me down, because it's a bigger, slower canoe. I'm gonna take this one, which gives me more space, and for free, I get another Native American. That's what this symbol means. So basically, I spent a Native American and three wood to get a permanent upgrade so I can carry more helpers and I got a helper. So that was my move. And I've still got all these cards I haven't played yet. Okay, Jen's turn again. She was gonna trap now. Now see, she'd like to do this now. It's kind of a bummer. If she uses him now, she, she doesn't wanna do him yet because she wants to wait until I play my trapper because then there would be another yellow on the board so her trapping would be more efficient. But she doesn't know when I'm gonna play my trapping. It might be quite a while before I do. So she's gonna go on ahead and do it. She's gonna power up with her commander. She's not planning on moving at all. So she's gonna use him. And so that means there are two yellows. And let's see, how much fur does she want? She's gonna pump it up. So she gets to activate this guy twice. So that's four furs, one, two, three, four. As you can see, Jen's really weighing herself down here. But that's okay, because now, her, that was her core action, she's now gonna do a recruiting action as well and get rid of some of this stuff. She's got a lot, she could recruit anybody. Who does she wanna recruit? She's got three equipment and four. Let's see, considering the fact she already got that guy who lets her move faster, I don't think she's gonna do this. This guy lets you build canoes cheaper than normal. This guy, let you use um, buffalo to move up the river, but in a special way. This says, how far do you get to move up the river? It's equal to the number of, what is that? That is the hunting symbols that are currently in play. So if you play this when there's a lot of hunting symbols on the board, you can move really far forward. But you know that's gonna be better with more players because a lot more hunting symbols will be up. I don't know if she's interested in that one. Sacagawea is awesome. Not only is she a level three, so she powers up people quite a bit if she helps them. She, uh, activating her, lets you do Native American village actions without having to use your villagers. I think Jen's gonna recruit Sacagawea. So that requires three pelts, one, two, three, and three equipment, one, two, three, and she has gotten Sacagawea. All right, and that means now she's not so weighed down. If she moves, it won't, she won't get slowed down. All right, and a new thing comes out. Uh, this guy's awesome. This guy lets you get an extra hour of daylight. Um, you get one less penalty for when you camp. That's awesome. All right, so Jen is almost ready to camp. Next turn, she'll probably use these last cards, and then she'll camp, probably. 
And I'm, meanwhile, I'm starting my second month of travel. Let's see, what am I going to do? You know what? Actually, I think I'm going to stop right there because I think I've, got, I've demonstrated quite a bit, but there's a lot more. We haven't gotten to the mountains yet. We haven't started to worry about horses. We have not built canoes. I have upgraded, but we haven't upgraded the other way. There's a lot of stuff I haven't done here. More Indians are going to come in. Jen hasn't camped yet. She hasn't used Sacagawea's ability yet, which she'll probably use next turn to get one free action off the board um, you know, to set herself up for the future. There's a lot to, still to do, and we I've taken one step. Jen hasn't taken any, and yet we've already started to build strategies. I want to go heavy into equipment. Jen, she's just, she has somehow managed to get herself a much bigger party without weighing herself down. So she could travel light, but she's got a lot more options because of Chakajuia. But anyway, that was, that's a half an hour. That's the first half hour of a game of Lewis and Clark. Now, if you'd like, I will try to play through a few more rounds. Uh, see if I can get further upriver. I don't know if I'll actually make it to the mountains because that's going to take a while. But if you'd like to see how far I do get, you can hit the button that's on screen right now for extended play, or you can hit the other button on screen for final thoughts. Your choice. Five, four, three, two, one.